there and welcome back to my channel. This week, I am going to be tackling some of the items on my to-do list. The first of which being, I need to do some cord management in my sewing room. I have a lot of cords just hanging down everywhere, especially around my sewing table. And that brings me to today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. I wanna thank FlexiSpot so much for sponsoring this video. Back in December of last year, FlexiSpot sent me their Pro Plus E7 standing desk. The desk can be programmed to different heights based on your very specific standing or sitting needs, and it lowers and raises very easily with just the touch of a button. It is so smooth, so quiet. It's also just a really sturdy table. I actually had someone ask me in the comments a few weeks ago if this desk was worth it. Is it gonna be sturdy? Is it gonna shake a bunch when you're sewing? This desk is so sturdy and that does not happen. It's very, very heavy duty, very well made. And actually when I was putting this desk together, I had to get my husband to kind of help me lift it and you know position it into place because it is so heavy. It's not going anywhere unless you want it to. I did end up getting casters, little wheels to go on the bottom of the desk so I can move it around my sewing room. I can raise it into a standing height position and butt it up against my cutting table if I need a little extra surface for laying out fabric, which is really nice. FlexiSpot has a variety of accessories that you can add onto these desks like drawers and cord management trays and little shelves and all kinds of things that you can add onto your desk to personalize it to your needs. They just sent me a little cord management tray that attaches to the bottom of the desk. So I'm gonna install that today and I'm gonna put a little power strip in there that I can plug my sewing machines into. I'll also plug in the actual FlexiSpot cord into that power strip and kind of keep all of those cords tucked up and away under the desk so that they're not getting caught up on my feet when I'm trying to sew. Okay, let's do it. So to make installation easy, FlexiSpot does include a template that you can line up where you wanna place this tray. I threw this away. <laughs> I do that all the time. I throw stuff away all the time. Anyway, so I don't have this, but I still think it'll be relatively straightforward. I'm just going to install the brackets and then the tray just slips right in there and then these little screws go in to kind of keep the tray connected to the bracket. want to have kind of a low-key sewing day today. I have a couple of projects that I've been working on over the last couple of weeks just kind of off and on when I have time. One is a little vintage pattern. It's this little new look pattern that I found at a thrift store and I've already started the dress. I went ahead and you know kind of sewed it up really quick, basted it together and tried it on a couple of days ago and just have some fitting adjustments to make and I, I feel like I'm pretty close to finishing that dress. And then I also want to work on the linen pants that I also talked about in that video a few weeks ago. I made these pants using the Lutterlow system and I talk a little bit about that in a couple of videos I'll link down below. But I've got those all cut out. The pants, I feel like the pants will probably come together pretty quickly. I don't know if I'll finish those today and the dress today, but I do want to work on those. So I think I might just turn on a podcast or a movie and have kind of a low key sewing day and see how much I can get done on these this morning. Because later today I do have an appointment that I have to go to that's going to take up pretty much my whole afternoon. So um, I want to see what I can get done before I have to go to that. I'll be installing an invisible zipper in the center back seam of this dress. And to start, I just basted that center back seam allowance together and I'm gonna press that open and pin the zipper tape right down the center of that seam with the right side of the zipper tape facing the seam allowance that I have pressed open. Then I will baste the edge of the zipper tape to the seam allowance, only to the seam allowance. So I've got the dress kind of pushed out of the way here. And this is gonna help me keep the zipper in place when I do the final install. 
I can remove the basting stitches from that center back seam and that will give me access to the zipper so that I can unzip it and finish sewing in the zipper. Okay, so I'm making progress on this dress. However, I, I really need to get a, an invisible zipper foot, presser foot for my sewing machine. So the zipper foot that I have on my sewing machine right now is somewhat workable for sewing invisible zippers. I have done it before, but it's a real pain in the butt. <laughs> so I'm getting really frustrated. I went ahead and just ordered a zipper foot for an invisible zipper. I think I also need to get a longer zipper for the back because originally I was thinking I was gonna put the zipper in the side of the dress. And then as I was doing the fitting, I figured it was actually gonna be a little easier to do a back zipper as the pattern originally calls for. So anyway, this project is once again on hold while I wait for the presser foot to come in. I also need to go to the store and get another zipper, but that's okay. I'm gonna work on the linen pants now. I'm starting these pants by prepping my pockets and I'm gonna keep it really simple for the pockets on these pants. I'm just gonna interface the pocket opening along the pants edge and along the pocket edge. Then once I get the pocket bag assembled, I can attach the pocket to the pants right sides together. And if you'd like a little bit more in-depth tutorial on how I assemble pockets, I'll link a few videos down below for some pants and a jacket actually that I show how I make pockets. I pretty much do the same process for almost every single time when I do pockets like this. So I'll link those below for you. And then once I have the pocket prepped, I can kind of flip that back over to the wrong side of the pants, press it really nice and neat, and I can work on the pleat of the pants. To form the pleat, I'm actually gonna first form a crease down the front of the pants. So I'm just folding the pants leg in half, matching up the seam allowance on either side of the pant leg. And I will continue that crease all the way up to the location of the pleat on the front of the pants. Then I can take this over to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna secure that pleat in place. I'm gonna sew down probably about two inches here and then I will press the pleat toward the center front. You can press it toward the side seam or the center front, however you please. And then I'm just going to baste that in place to keep it in place. I also basted the top edge of the pocket and the side edge of the pocket to the pants just to hold those in place while I assemble the pants. Now I'm not gonna go into detail on how I do a fly in this video, but I do have other videos for how to do that. I will link those below. So I just attached the two front legs together, creating a fly closure in the front. And now I can attach the two back legs together, sewing along the back crotch and center back. I'll also clean up all of my seam allowances with my serger for this project. And then once I have the back legs assembled, I've also got the, the darts sewn in there too. Once I have those assembled, I can attach the back legs to the front legs along the side seams first and then along the inseam of the pants. Okay, so the pants are getting there. Um, I do need to take them in just a little bit more in the back probably just so that they'll sit just a little bit higher, but not, not much. They're actually pretty, pretty darn close. I also made them extremely too long. <laughs> I have like a constant fear of my pants being too short. It's probably like trauma from middle school and growing too fast and my pants never being long enough. Very excited to finish these. So I think I'm going to call it done for today. And then I do need to work on the waistband, which I'll work on later this week or maybe next week. I don't know. Um, I love this color too. Very, very excited about these. Okay, it is the next day. My audio might sound a little different because I had to charge my cordless wireless mic from yesterday that I forgot to put back on the charger. So I'm using a different mic. Anyhow, um, it's the next day and I wanna finish these pants today. I was originally thinking I was gonna reuse a waistband from a different pants pattern to create the waistband for these, but I think I'm just gonna draft a whole new waistband and kind of custom fit it to these pants and make sure that I really like the, the fit of that. I'm just gonna measure the waistline of the pants, taking into account the seam allowance. So I wanna make sure that I exclude the seam allowance. So I'll measure just a little ways down on the waistband make sure I kind of make a note of each of the darts and the side seams in the center back and the front fly position. 
And I'll start with a straight waistband. So I'll just kind of take that length of that waistband, noting all the notches where it needs to line up with the different parts of the pants waist. Then I'm gonna measure around my waist where I want the waistband to hit. And then I'm going to kind of do a slash and curve along the top of the waistband to kind of start to form that curve and make sure that the top of the waistband is the length of my waist circumference, accounting for the overlap of the fly and where I'm gonna put the button closure for the fly. So if you are unfamiliar with waistbands, putting waistbands on pants, you may be asking yourself like, why would I do a curved waistband? It just seems kind of counter counterintuitive um, because it does look quite curved depending on the shape of your body. So my waist is a good bit smaller than like my hips and my lower abdomen. So this curved shape really makes sure that this waistband is going to fit nice and secure against the waist and that I'm especially not going to have any gapping in the back because that's a problem that I run into a lot with pants because, you know, my butt kind of goes out a little further than my waist and the same for my hips. So doing the curved waistband like this is just going to make that fit a little bit better. And while it looks really curved like this, once you wrap it around the body, and we're doing a rough experiment here, but once you wrap it around the body, you can see that it actually, you know, straightens out because you have that smaller portion of the waistband at the smaller portion of your waist. The larger portion now fits around the larger portion of the you know lower abdomen and um, it does end up being you know pretty level across the bottle bottle body horizontally so that is why you do a curved waistband This is a two-piece waistband, so I've got the exterior and interior portion right sides together. I'm going to sew right along the top of the waistband, grade down my seam allowances, and then press the seam allowance toward the interior portion of the waistband and understitch that to the interior side of the waistband. I also cut this waistband in two pieces so that I could position it to have the straight grain on the center front of the waistband. It just gave me a little bit more flexibility, so it is connected at the center back. Before I connect the waistband to the pants, I went ahead and added some belt loops and just kind of basted those in place. And then I positioned the waistband around the waist. I'll sew that on, kind of typical waistband installation. Again, you can check out those videos that I have linked below if you want to see a little bit more on that. And again, I'll make sure to grade all my seam allowances down, press the seam allowance into the waistband, and then once I get that waistband prepped, I can kind of fold it back in place, finish the edges and pin it in place to do a stitch in the ditch around the entire waistband. So you'll be able to see the seam on the interior, but it'll be hidden in the seam of the front. So it'll be kind of like an invisible seam on the front and I won't have any visible top stitching on the waistband. Once I get the waistband installed, I can go back in and top stitch all of the belt loops in place with bar tacks. Now I found this whole pile of buttons at the thrift store a few weeks ago, and I managed to find myself a nice little button for my pants in there. So whenever I sew on buttons, I always tape them down with scotch tape. And then once I get the button sewn on, I can just pull off the scotch tape. It just kind of helps hold the button in place and it pulls off really easily.
good morning. It is the next day and I finished my linen pants. They look amazing. You'll have to stick around to the end of the video. I'll do a little, I'll do a little try on for you. I also have this pair of shorts that used to be pants. These, if you remember, were the pants that I bought to kind of help me make a pair of cargo pants several videos back. I just cut off the legs of these and use them to make pockets for another pair of pants that I thrifted. I'll link that video below. But um, I wanted to make these into a pair of shorts. I really like the fit of these. They're a little bit big in the waist, just a little bit. So I think what I'm gonna do is hem them up to be about, I don't know, about a three inch inseam. It'll be kind of an easy way to update these and turn them into shorts. So I'm gonna do that right now. Since these pants had a tapered leg, I'm just gonna open up the side seam just a little bit on the interior here where it's gonna be folded under. That way it'll make it easier to get that nice straight hem on the bottom of these shorts. Next up, I have a pair of my husband's pants that need to be mended. There's just a little hole here where the belt loop was attached. So all I'm gonna do is use some scrap jeans material that I have left over from other projects. I also have this little, um, Oh gosh, fusible webbing stuff here. I think this is called stitch witchery. I'll use this to attach a little tiny patch to this hole, and then I will reattach the belt loop with a bar tack. Now that I have my new zipper, I can reinstall the zipper. So I took off the old zipper. I'm putting this one back on the exact same way, basting it to the seam allowance. I'm actually gonna go in and just kind of clean up some of the edges with my serger. Then I can open up the zipper and stitch down the edge of the zipper teeth with this zipper foot. This thing is a total game changer. This worked amazingly. I can't believe it took me so long to get one of these. Once I had that zipper installed, I was off to the races on this dress. I have had so many stops and starts on this dress. However, I did kind of do things out of order. You know, I didn't really follow the instructions of the pattern. I just kind of went rogue with this thing. And I ended up having to improvise a lot on the construction of this. I started getting to a point where I was getting frustrated. <laughs> This is the point where I realized like, okay, I have a lot, I have a lot of problem solving to do here. And I decided to just finish this dress off camera. So, you know what, let's, let's just get to the good part. Please don't come. 